Welcome. I think that we're live, everyone. Um, good morning if you are in the East Coast and um, good afternoon or good evening uh, wherever else you are. My name is Nicole Davies and I'm the Managing Director of Berkeley Institute for Creative Entrepreneurship and I also currently lead Open Music Initiative um, also out of Berkeley. Um, I'm really pleased to have this panel. We don't have a ton of time so I am going to jump right in. Um, this is a discussion on music models for the new creative economy and if I'm being honest um, I could talk to these folks and about this topic for much longer than we have. I'm really excited to be bringing these people together. So um, on our uh, session today we have Austin Roby um, who is co-founder of Ampled. We have Terry Tildesley um, who is a board member of Resonate as well as a songwriter and producer herself. And we have Josephine Shetty, who um, is an organizer in the Union of Musicians and Allied Workers and is also an artist under the name of Coino Orgasm. I don't know if I said that right. That's my first time <laughs> saying that out loud. Um, and I'm um, really excited for this conversation. So um, I'm going to hand the mic over to you all. Um, you know, what most excites me about this is how do we start putting uh, control back into the hands of creators and consumers, into the hands of people who love music, and how do we start having those conversations directly with the people that care most um, about this thing that we all really value. And so I'm curious for each of you, um, and Terry, maybe we'll start with you because Resonate uh, has been around for a little bit um, now. What most interested you about when Resonate was forming um, and, and what got you interested in joining? I first came across Resonate uh, a few years ago and I joined as an artist because I was very fired up by the, the vision of Resonate and I was working uh, at a music tech fest at the time and uh, gradually got more involved and then got proposed to uh, stand as a board member, got elected and I oh, no. Um, and the thing that's uh, really inspiring about it is, is some very fundamental principles, which are that um, you know there should be a fairer system in music, particularly for you know especially for artists, that people should own the tech they use and have a say in how it's run and also a share of the profits. And those are all things that we're building at Resonate, and we've been gradually building over a period of years. We've got um, you know thousands. Of Numbers and want to grow as much as we can to to give artists a better deal. And we're starting off with streaming. Um, we pay twice as much as as standard platforms, but it's not the be all and end all. We've got big plans for allying with other cooperatives, for working in the field of uh, digital identity and privacy. So there's a lot going on. Yeah, thank you. You know, I, I think for a lot of people often their first introduction to a co-op is like, you know, where you go to get like the good vegetables and your tea tree oil and your like nutritional yeast or whatever. And it's got that like lovely smell and all the cool people. Um, but ultimately, like you said, it's really about like passing the profits directly to the people involved and having control over the system that you're a part of, um, which I love. Austin, um, I, I think I found out about y'all on, on Twitter and um, I was, intrigued immediately and then I checked out your website and I have to say um, you know I know this is not the focus of the talk but I love how you do terms and conditions it's so accessible and I think it's um, everybody should look at the website and how they sort of run down um, what's usually like a really boring legal document and you made it so interesting and engaging it's definitely the most time I've ever spent on a terms and conditions page um, <laughs> but um, which I think kind of speaks to like the values and principles of, of something like that can you talk a little bit about um, what was the mindset and, and what was your thought process in forming Ampled? Yeah, um, so the, the easy way to describe Ampled is it's kind of like a Patreon-like platform for musicians, um, collectively owned by the artists and workers. So our, our goal, um, you know, we want to build a more sustainable, um, inclusive, democratic, transparent online economy. And uh, the way to, to do that, I think, means opening or lifting up the hood and kind of like showing what the inner workings of the business are like. So we've uh, 
spent, you know, a decent amount of effort and it's a continual effort of, of showing kind of like the under the workings of the business. So that means like, we want to make sure that terms are clear, accessible, readable, and hopefully if we do it right, even entertaining to read. So we have like TLDR sections, cartoons, and you know, we have actually, um, the, the team that builds Ampled is over 20 active contributors now, uh, including a former lawyer from Patreon. So we have like a pretty good brain trust of people to actually build out terms that are extremely fair and that we can actually like not hide them as fine print, but bring them to the forefront. So the next step for us is actually to um, expand upon a readable privacy policy and add um, uh, kind of like explainer videos inside the, the legal text as well. So like not only what's in it, but what's not in it is important as well. I love that. I love, you know, I've been um, talking to some folks over the last year about sort of this this concept of like education built into a platform and um, how, you know, a, a platform can serve as an empowerment tool for artists to use, not only to like get their music out there and to have transparent and accurate um, payments, but also to educate people about sort of how these systems work. Um, so Josephine, I just learned that um, not only um, have you been working with the Union of Musicians and Allied Workers for a little while, but that even previous to um, that founding, that you and your group of organizers had had a lot of other um, wins and campaigns um, recently. And so um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what the power has been of bringing musicians together to have a collective voice and um, what catalyzed ultimately the decision to form the union? Yeah. Um... So the union launched in May and it was at, at the first, it really took form and catalyzed because of the COVID-19 crisis, um, which was just exacerbating as we've seen existing forms of injustice in our society and music workers are experiencing and were especially at the start of the crisis experiencing a more pronounced lack of justice in our industry and, that already existed. And so we took hold of the moment by organizing together for our collective care, for our collective stability and health, um, by advocating for the expansion of unemployment benefits in the CARES relief package. Um, and so organizing together has been really about putting, positioning music workers in solidarity with broader labor and social justice movements. and. Um, while we have addressed like really industry specific issues like getting fair deals from streaming services and um, ensuring that musicians receive royalties they're owed and we're working on establishing more just relationships with labels. Um, we're also, we also share concerns of the existing labor and social justice movements about the world we live in. So for instance, we support Medicare for all and a Green New Deal, the abolishment of ICE and the prison industrial complex and so we really see like worker power as um, something that only gets stronger when we're all involved. And we haven't seen music workers involved at that level yet in such a strong unified front. Um, so that's what we wanna be is like a platform for collective action. Because like you said, like we've all been involved in some different actions um, before and a, a lot of us have organized at different capacities before and have been talking about starting a union for a long time and just talking about like, you know, what we want from a union, what we haven't gotten from um, other like platforms like that. Um, and so, yeah, being, being a coalition and being a platform has been, um, has been a, a long time coming for us. Yeah, you know, um, you know, going back to what we talked about, or Austin, kind of what you'd mentioned around like the transparency and, and putting like the power and control of the artist to, to understand what they're signing up for. I mean, I think that, you know, coming in a bit as an outsider over the last few years and, and sort of understanding that, um, you know, artists are sort of have habitu habitually been sort of taught, like, don't worry about it. Somebody else will take care of it as far as like payments and legal contracts. Um, and then also at the same time, it's been sort of purposefully difficult to understand. Um, and you know, contracts and streaming rates and, and all of these pieces have been really confusing, perhaps on purpose. And so um, 
I guess I'm curious, you know, what do you think is sort of this next generation of how we break down these like layers of confusion from all of your perspectives? Like, how are you all doing that in your um, respective places? But then, you know, what do you think a, a new economy looks like where we sort of like wipe away the confusion and start again, like connecting creators and consumers directly to each other? And um, anyone who wants to jump in. Well, I think uh, Austin's point about transparency is absolutely the key to all this. And at Resonate, we publish the streaming rates. Everyone gets paid the same. There's no black box accounting like there is with other streaming platforms. And I think uh, that knowledge, those statistics are, are very, very powerful. And if you look at research that's been going on in the music space, whether it's about um, inclusivity or, or pay, you know, the more um, transparency there is, the more ammunition there is and, and building blocks really to to change things and also with with covid it's really laid bare what a what an extractive system we have particularly for for musicians and allied workers um for example the featured artists coalition in london did some research that found that um, for emerging artists 90 percent of their income is from live so if you switch off live there's very little left and um you know we are a very pivotal moment right now i think um thank you yeah you know it, it is interesting like ultimately right now it's sort of laid bare some of the models or structures that we thought were going to support artists and um immediately when live evaporated we saw that it was a really different model than we had all sort of thought was going on um, you know, I know that um, some of you are sort of like newer orgs, but I'm curious, you know, looking um, and resonate. How is it a few years old? Is it older than that, Terry? Uh, yes, it's certainly been going since 2016. OK, yeah. awesome. Um, so I guess my question is, you know, how do smaller entities start linking together and building this new economy? And I, I mean, I, I think that, you know, again, resonates a bit of a pioneer in the space, but what I'm assuming is going to be happening is that there are going to need to be new structures because um, I don't see, um, at least in the United States, live music coming back anytime too soon. Um, my husband is a DJ and um, he certainly has no desire to be in a closed room with a bunch of people shouting. Um, and so how do we start to look at, and, and you know, I'm, I'm curious, Josephine, I know you're in touch with a ton of artists in your community um, what are new systems? What are new ways that people are experimenting? And, um, you know, Austin and, and Terry, I'm curious, have you been connecting with other startups or co-ops? Um, how do things start to link together and how do people start to sort of build this new economy from the ground up? Um, I think I'll, I'll just start off quickly in, in essence of, um, placing musicians in solidarity with other workers. A, a big task of our union has been finding our points of unity and finding our intersections with different movements. And um, there's just so many ways that music workers can connect with other coalitions and build strength in our movements. Um, and I love what Terry said about um, generating more revenue from streaming services and getting uh, musicians and artists involved in like the ownership of the tools that we use and I think redistributing resources is like a big step for um, the future of the music economy because so much is hoarded in the hands of so few and gate kept really like you're, like you're saying there's there's so much that goes into like our contracts and our negotiations and a lot of that power is not in the hands of especially working musicians musicians in the industry's lowest economic strata and um, so we see like redistribution of resources as like a big step. And I, I actually was really interested to see, um, there's a musician, Jeff Tweedy, who's in the band Wilco. He recently announced that he's gonna commit 5% of all future revenue he earns um, yeah, as awesome. a songwriter to, yeah, organizations committed to racial justice. And he sees this as a step towards uh, reparations in the music industry, which is also, um, a form of redistributing resources. And so I, I, I was excited by that. I mean, I don't know if that exactly is the answer, but like Jeff Tweedy himself says, you know, it's a start that we've never seen before. And so, especially with this pandemic, I think we're seeing a lot of things we've never seen before. And so we're really primed um, to 
innovate right now in our industry? I think, um, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity to, for different organizations to come together. I think we, uh, we're in an age where tools and companies keep consolidating and consolidating power. So um, having more options is a good thing. Uh, if we have more um, autonomous artists run sustainable options, I think that's a healthier thing for the community. Where I think there's a lot more room to come together is through um, solidarity and organization between artists and tech workers. Because I think there's a lot of overlap there in interest and frustration. Yeah. Um, so that is something that uh, we've seen at least with Ampled with our base of contributors. Um, so we've, um, we have, yeah, over 20 people, I think 80% 80, 80 of us are musicians, but also come from tech companies, whether it's Spotify, Google, Kickstarter, hmm. Patreon. And there's, uh, there's a, a shared frustration with, with the existing tools out there. So there is a lot of room, I think, where tech workers and musicians can come together. Um, so I have a question about geography, because Austin, I, I completely agree that sort of there is sort of this strength in numbers. Um, and so obviously each of your, um, you know, Josephine, you mentioned that the union is global and it's, it's um, I think, important to mention that because we're sort of like in Europe right now, we're in Spain. Um, <laughs> um, and I guess I'm curious, you know, have you seen geographic centralization? I think one of the things that's been really interesting, and obviously a lot of people have been talking about um, during COVID times, is supporting the small businesses that you want to see flourish um, in your community. And so when everything does open up again, there's places that, you know, I want to be able to buy kitchen implements in my neighborhood. I don't want to have to go to the mall and, you know, all of those like basic things. And so like I've, I've started following a bunch more companies on um, Instagram, which is not, <laughs> not a small business. Um, but, you know, so I can like directly uh, network with them. Maybe there's a, a local like startup that could, um, start connecting me with my local businesses so I could connect uh, directly with them. Um, but I've been, you know, interfacing like a lot more directly with them because I'll say like, hey, I need, uh, you know, this or that thing or, you know, what are you open? What are your hours? And the same thing with like the local bagel shop um, that was a family run business. Um, and so I guess I'm curious, Austin, you know, what does that look like and what do the different communities look like? And somebody is trying to interrupt me. Sorry, guys, about five to 10 more minutes figure it out. Um, you know, what does that look like? Have you seen that you've been like either genre specific or geography specific? I'm curious sort of around that because I think that there is sort of this like power in like community rooted movements, but obviously at the same time, we're completely decentralized. Um, and so how does, how does that build? Um, well, you know, even though um, we've all been like, at least like the team and you know people working together have all been in Brooklyn. We haven't seen each other. So we've been all um, remote. Uh, there are artists from several different countries um, kind of like spread all across. So I think like the, but there is a, like a desire for some kind of direct connection that feels yeah. more local in nature. And I, I, I think that like that, um, maybe ends up uh, being a desire for like permeability between artists and, and listeners. Uh, so mm -hmm. if there's some way that um, technology can facilitate that, uh, like a direct facilitation, direct relationship, I feel like that's where things would go today. Yeah. No, I mean, it's so true. Like, obviously, um, we are live right now and somebody's trying to uh, interrupt me in my space but like it is sort of these like you know synchronous quote unquote live experiences i've been on a couple of zoom concerts that were closed and there's joy in sort of experiencing that and seeing others experience it that's different than like watching a, a live show on instagram for example where it's like pretty anonymous um so i think that yeah i mean you're you're right in that like we're getting used to being remote but at the same time um there is that desire for connection um Josephine, have you seen 
um, geographic clusters at all? Are you all organized in, in that way at all? Yeah, it's been interesting because um, we are so dependent on like the virtual structure right now that um, we haven't yet seen the the like formation of localized chapters because it's just not as really relevant at this moment. Um, but we do want to have more localized chapters with our union, but right now like it's very just like cyberspace geography only. And um, it's funny because I haven't even met some of you know, a lot of our new members and especially some of our core organizers who I've been meeting with like multiple times a week on Zoom. I haven't even met them in person yet. Um, but it, it's, it is also kind of empowering to be organizing virtually right now because like you mentioned before, we're able to make these connections with other coalitions and other groups that might have been more difficult or more tedious to do previously. Um, and I just want to mention like a couple of connections that we have made. Like we we recently teamed up with No Cop Unions, um, which is a movement to expel um, cop unions from the AFL CIO, which is the like international or sorry, the National um, League of Unions. And um, you know, that's a that's a point of solidarity that we have identified as music workers, as a new music union, you know, positioning ourselves in solidarity with um, the movement to abolish the and defund the police. Um, so yeah, organizing virtually has had a lot of exciting potential, but of course we really do look forward to being in person when we can. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you know, ultimately like music is something that we as humans like to experience in person and there's nothing that replaces um that experience there was a busker like i was i was biking a few weeks ago and somebody was busking and like when's the last time any of you saw anyone busking at all and like i almost started crying because it was just like oh my god like live music like you know people are like experiencing live music and i didn't realize how much i missed it until um experiencing it on the on the sidewalk um terry do you all have um have you seen your platform flourish more and i know we just have a couple of minutes but um have you seen resonate flourish more in specific locales is that something that you all have data on or, or track we're fairly global so we haven't got any particular sort of cities or countries um pushing ahead of others and, and the teams based across europe and the us um just in terms of what you've been talking about with collaboration and communities and finding other um, organizations and businesses um it's very exciting to see work being done about mapping social enterprises and yeah. cooperatives and i think there's more work to be done at structures to pull people together but the sheer power when you've got organizations of with similar values in the same space is huge and we were part of some research at Nesta in the UK and uh, they brought together you know a phone co-op and a taxi co-op and when you think you know what potential there is to make radical changes in the economy that's very exciting and there's actually some very interesting research from the um, New York University CIC showing that globally there's real interest in radical policies um, people want change as a real thirst for it. So yeah. both at the very local level and at the, the very, you know, global level, there's there's so much going on. Well, I'm I'm super encouraged. I want to thank you all. I think we're just at about time. Um, but I am very encouraged um, at these new models. And uh, Terry, thanks for pioneering the space. And um, Austin and Josephine, thanks for coming in to represent. Um, this was great. And I look forward to our next one. Take care, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. All right, it was nice to meet y'all. Lovely to, to meet you and a great to stay in, in touch. Um, yes, I, I would saw. love to. Super exciting. Okay. Right, nice Thank to meet y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.